Well, hello. Today's devotion is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 to chapter 11, verse 1. In these verses today, Paul will finish his answer to the question of eating food offered to idols, which he started in chapter 8, and he'll also give us some very practical advice for daily living. So let me read verses 23 and 24 first. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Now, every time I read these verses, maybe you do too, I ask myself, is what I'm doing, or I'm in a habit of doing, or intend to do, is that good, is that beneficial to others? Perhaps we should ask ourselves these questions daily. Now, verses 25 through 30. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. I do not mean your conscience, but his conscience. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake with thanksgiving, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? You know, it is possible for us to be too fussy and create problems that need not exist when we insist on not doing something because we don't believe that's possible. So don't ask the questions. But if an inconsistency is pointed out to you between what you believe and your actions, then cease from doing that. Now verses 31 through 33. So whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Remember who you are in all your activities, both your daily activities, the ones necessary for human life, as well as those you choose to do. Examine your motives is the uh, underlying challenge here. And now chapter 11, verse 1. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Well, how do we imitate Paul if we don't know anything about Christ? Well, we need to find out about Christ. And if we haven't done so already, I strongly encourage you to look through the Old Testament, particularly in Isaiah chapters 52 and 53, his prophecy on the suffering servant describes Jesus. Also the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as the epistles of Paul. These also all give us uh, some particular, not only prophecies, but observations of Christ's life here on earth. So what can we learn from those? Well, number one, I think, is he was meek. Now, meek does not mean being a pushover. It means he's powerful, but he restrains himself. Uh, he loved all, even his enemies. And when I think about that, I'm thinking, well, my enemies. No, think about this. Judas, who betrayed him, he loved him. He called him friend right up to the end. And also Saul, who was a murderer of Christians. He loved him enough to save him. He associated with the down and out of society. I have to ask myself, do I do that? He was compassionate to the hungry, to the weak, to the forsaken, to the children, to the foreigner. He grieved over the lost and dying. He wept when his friend Lazarus died. He is acquainted with grief. He did not seek his revenge. And most of all, he did not seek his own glory. He did not have to be number one. So to sum this all up, the freedom we have in Christ is not just for our sake, it's for the sake of others. And who are the others? Our enemies. And why? Because our conduct will point them towards Christ. Those indifferent to Christ. Perhaps by our example, they may be one to Christ. And finally, to other believers, because someone is always watching you. Your conduct, my conduct, needs to be such that it strengthens, it confirms, and it helps a weaker Christian or a younger Christian not to fall into temptation. I hope today's devotion has been challenging, and I encourage you to watch them tomorrow. Thank you.